Hi, Misha here, and last time on our great AKM Soviet Russian adventure, I talked about why I was not keeping the Soviet arms Palmetto State PSA Tula AKM that I picked up. It was 1963 dated, and it was really a tough call not to keep it, but I didn't didn't go easy on it. If you're going to ask this kind of money, you need to get the detail. If you compare these dollars to donuts, same money, the Childers FB build, it's superior to the PSA receiver FN barrel, in my opinion. And as promised in that video, now we're going to take a look at a very similar offering, but of an Ishesk kit build, AKM from Atlantic Firearms. Will it meet my expectations? Will it be worthy of a sling? Or will it to fail in the wash? Now, full disclosure, I bought this. It was not given to me. And full disclosure, Atlantic does do builds kind of up my alley. The last one I can think of was the North Korean you know, build we had a while back. But I'm not going to go easy on them. Just because I kind of like their style and how they often do things, I'm going to be tough. I'm going to be nitpicky. If I was that way for PSA, I have to be that way for Atlantic. So, with that said, I bought this with my own money. Opening it up here, is it worth it? It's really the exact same money as the PSA. And new in the zipper case. So before we pull it out of the plastic and see what we got, as always, if you could, please do like, share, or subscribe. If you really like to help us out, check out the link to Patreon, because anything Russian Ain't cheap anymore. With that, let's dive in. To begin with, what they come with, Atlantic ships theirs in these zipper cases. They're inexpensive, but actually useful. I have been, ended up with a number of them over the years, and I literally take them to the range because they're not too big. They're relatively thick. They have pockets. They're fine. I'd rather have this than a fancy cardboard box. Uh, on the other hand, we'd just get a... Really, just the mag here. It, it's fine. It is mag, but I have to say the waffle one on the hog here that the PSA came with looked nicer. But I think these are just thrown in to give you something. So yeah, I slightly like the case more than the box. I slightly like the mag that PSA shipped more than this one, but. Inside the case, it comes in plastic, so let's get that off. And while moving the case up, I realized I left one model from before. Anyway, hey, free advertisement. Last time when you're blind. But anyway, I was doing a video on uh, the F-111 Aardvark on my personal Misha channel, so if you like um, Vietnam-era aircraft, uh, there's that. <laughs> moving on. I uh, got this guy out of the bag here. Typical zip tie is a chamber flag you know hey it works and more importantly the rubber bumper so that the handle doesn't poke through because ak charging handles have a habit of poking through lots of things so this is what we have here and this is the year Ishesk 1960. So not a first year production, that would be 1959, but first full year production? Anyway, early enough. And uh, something I wasn't expecting. I was just hoping for something, say, pre-1965, kind of an early Ishesk, to go with my uh, late one, which is a 73. 
kind of when I settled for that one. Yeah, 75, 76, or 77 would have been cool, but I kind of took the best condition kit I could find when I was doing my Legion USA build all those years ago. So, now that we know the year, let's see how parts correct and serial matching this is and is not. Right off the bat, a couple of things we know aren't correct just because of you know build reasons. One, polymer pistol grip. US made. And two, having the slant style muzzle brake. We talked about that a bit in the PSA video, but even though the slant brake is very iconic for the AKM, they didn't start off with it. They really didn't appear till 66, 67 at the earliest. And of course, this mag. By the way, it went in just fine. So with that out of the way, I guess we'll start with the barrel hardware. This has the non-lightning cut front sight base. Machined, of course, which is correct. It has the flat top and bottom gas block without the relief cut or lightning cut behind the bayonet lug. That was done later. And it has the correct machined, so squared off, handguard retainer. So far, so good. Moving back, we have an appropriate looking trigger this time. And we have an appropriate just, you know, mag catch. Nothing special there, which is good. The rear sight, though. This is maybe our first problematic area. Now, this is a non-lightning cut rear sight. And it does have the serial number etched in. And as far as I know, they're all etched. That's actually correct and fine. They didn't start doing the lightning cut till 62, 63 in that time frame. But the original sight leaves were not notched on the left side. Like the original AK-47, AK Type 3, they were actually notched on the right. I could be wrong about this. And again, the, this does have the etched serial, so I believe that this came with the kit. But I also believe it's a later style sight. I really was hoping it would have the, the teeth on this side. Then it would be correct. really would. But, oh well. On the other hand, we do have the appropriate non-lightning cut bolt carrier. We talked about this in the previous video as well. They did not start lightning cut till 63, give or take. So that's nice. Has the early style handle as well. And then moving on, the top cover seems fine to me. It doesn't have the lip here. Ribbing seems fine. Serial does match. And this is the non-lip style takedown slash into the recoil guide. So that seems fine. However, the safety selector. This could be correct. But something about it doesn't quite feel right to me. Let me know what you think. I'm, I can't quite put my finger on it. But it does not feel early. feels Russian, don't get me wrong. But it feels a little later. But I could just be crazy. I mean, I am crazy, but you know what I mean. And it is serial matched to the kit. But it seems to be a force match. It's an E-pin match. And the same goes for the takedown button back here. We'll look at it in a bit and we'll take it apart. But it is matching, 
So I believe it came with the kit, but it seems to be an E-pin match more than a factory stamp match. But keep in mind, especially with these older AKMs, the idea that they never went through at least a couple of Arsenal refurbs in all their history is frankly preposterous and not reasonable. So I can definitely see small parts like that wearing out, getting swapped either accidentally or intentionally. But the big deal is at least the carrier is the correct style. So that's nice. Now, as to the wood furniture. Honestly, you guys can look and tell me what you think. It's again, obviously Russian. And being in really decent shape, it's probably a replacement. Looking at the comb. I'm having a hard time telling. Keep in mind the Ishesk and Tula were different. I can tell you this is an Ishesk lower handguard because of the more kind of squared off trapezoidal shape here of the swell it does not have the drain hole underneath though See. now at this period for serialization it would have not had the vertical serial it would have had the horizontal small type serial let's see what you think Upper hand guard is that upper hand guard. Gas block and all that. Pretty well standard cleaning rod. Nothing special there. Let me what you think on the furniture. Original 60 or you know later replacement. I'm kinda leaning towards later, but could be wrong. It's a little hard for me because a lot of the parts guides online don't say as much as they show pictures, which makes perfect sense for 99.99% of people. Not so helpful for me, though. Oh, well. With that, let's talk about the barrel and receiver used here. These are on a Childers CG1 receiver, which is actually quite good for an Ishesk build, including the dimples here, quite pretty correct. Here are the faux Russian selector markings. I think most would agree they're closer to original than the PSA. Very pronounced spot welds. <laughs> and note that there are two welds, not three over the magwell. Same on this side. I'm going to let that slide. Yes, it would be nice to have three spot welds, but that's getting a little more picky than even I want to get because most of my clone rifles, even if it's a 100% correct parts kit, getting the receiver itself 100% correct is nigh on impossible, at least within a budget. But I would point that out that early on it would have had three spot welds, just, you know, to say it. We do have Y X stampings here. Proper. Well done, rivets. Can't complain. I do notice the dust cover does flare out a bit here. Probably just a little bit of old bending from you know, years of use. So there's a little bit of a gap back here. But up front, it's tight. Again, no old parts, so take that for what you will. And the barrel. This is a Polish FB Radom Cold Hammer Forge Chrome Line Barrel. And 16 and a quarter inches, so 415 millimeters threaded half by, excuse me, threaded 14 by one left hand. And most importantly, no glaring <laughs> marking here. See? Nice and clean on top. I can't really criticize the Childers receiver and FB random barrel because that's exactly what I did with my own pick years ago with the Legion USA. To my mind, if you're going to have to use replacement barrels and receivers, again, on a budget, within reason, that's the 
you know, best option in my opinion. You get nice rivet work on this side. Little dimple on that one. Nothing bad at all though. The Atlantic markings are on the underside. Good, good out of the way place. Of course, they have to be marked somewhere. Legal stuffs, but no reason to splash them all over the side or barrel. So with that, let's dive inside. Here's that recoil guide assembly out. Has a couple of numbers on it, including the serial of the kit. But yeah, it's fine. It's it's it's, it's the correct part, so no uh, real gripes there. And here's something that's quite pleasant. This has the proper rear trunnion, the so-called I-type. These were used from the beginning until about 62. Then you have a transition, and then you get to the kind of modern O-type. Yeah, so correct, of course, machined rear trunnion. You can also tell it's the correct selector arm here, as far as I know anyway. And let's look at the bolt group. I already saw that it has non-lightning cut and the correct charging handle. Nothing crazy here. Piston. Yeah, and the thing that jumps out at me is strange. Kind of a matte finish on it. Inside here. Trunnion feed ramp area. The polish barrel. And into the block there. Pretty standard magwell. As far as I can tell and know proper takedown and gas tube no no rattle to it seems to fit well if there's anything you'd like to tell me or ask about let me know but nothing right now is coming to mind or jumping out at me but I am not true expert on this stuff on exact parts variations nor do i have 100 percent correct expectations not for a 1960 kit at any rate so what do you think and here is the gas tube it seems the correct style to me because it doesn't have the lip here but you can let me know Seems fine. And this handguard was bugging me without the hole. I did my best to kind of dig into it. It seems correct for an early. It does seem like the drain holes came a little later on in AKM development. It doesn't have the rear spring. It just has the front kind of horseshoe or U-spring which I believe all the laminates did. And it's definitely not an AK-74 style. So I think this is correct. But again, if I'm wrong, please do let me know. But yeah, that was bugging me, so I had to kind of dig into it a wee bit. Let's get her back together and go from there. And back together, and now it's time to compare. You know I had to bring out my trusty old Legion assembled gun keep in mind this is a later style just kind of comparing the stocks where the pins are that kind of stuff matters the combs do feel a little different yeah it's a little shallower on the Atlantic it's taller on this the safeties I can't quite decide the ledge here has a rounded edge and tapers down. 
This is rounded too, but it is, <clears throat> excuse me, thinner. It is a thinner ledge than this. Let me know if you think this is the correct safety variation. It's very much a different style, more of a ledge, but I don't know if it's exactly correct for for this type. Again, the rear sight, I don't believe is correct because the teeth aren't on the right side. But let me know. Obviously a very different handle and bolt carrier. Same children's receiver. Different top cover. Notice the flare back here on this one and the bigger lip here. No flare. And just a very small lip there. And the uh, stamping lines are different, much more pronounced on the top one and the handguard. I do think, even if this isn't the matching handguard, which it may be, but I do think it is the right style without drain hole. Everything seems right for an early Ishesk. Just maybe not exactly right. This is a later one with the drain hole in it, as you see. There's a little bit of a gap here. But lines up it's fine it's not loose cast versus machined and then the early style versus the later style larger hole smaller hole yeah pretty straightforward and I made a change to my legion gun based on a little bit of feedback last time do you see it I replaced the pistol grip does that seem a little more appropriate? I've got a few different Russian grips. This does have the slash versus the dash, which should be correct for a Izhesk. Let me know. Again, this side of the stock. Note the side swivel versus the bottom. Yeah, different. definitely a different comb here. And you can tell the machined swivel versus the cast style here. And um, yeah, we're back to the front. A slant brake would definitely be correct for this one. But not so much for this one. Although, to be fair, a lot of old original pattern AKMs got the slant brake during a refurbishment. So, yeah. What can I do to make this look a little better? Not that it's bad, but I have a couple ideas. So give me a minute, and I'll be back. There we go. That definitely looks better for this one. Fit really nice and tight, too. Time's just about perfect. And I've been saving this for the right gun. It's the last... Russian wood grip I received from Legion USA nigh on a decade ago. Now, I believe it's a little darker color than the stock. But you could just say, you know, sweat from a hand. You know, I'd rather the grip be lighter, excuse me, darker than lighter. And it is Russian. It is in good shape. So, you know, hey. And it is appropriate for a 1960. They still continue to use wood for couple of years although a lot of these guns would get a synthetic Bakelite type grip during arsenal repair re and replacement it still seems a little incomplete though need one more thing there we go I decided to pick one of the experimental waffle mags these are super lightweight it's kind of funny to me the AKM was always meant to be light but they still had a few more things to do, like, you know, adding lightning cuts here and there that they hadn't qu quite got around to. I think a lot of the cuts, like here, going to the front side base with the cuts, cutting the carrier, happened around 63, maybe early 64. Tula seemed to be a little behind Ishesk. Most of the changes seemed to start at Ishesk, which makes sense. That's where Mikhail Kalashnikov uh, worked and 
at his base of operations. So yeah, no problems inserting the mag either. Honestly, I haven't really talked too much about fit and finish. One thing as far as like the, the, the coloration of the metal, you guys are going to have to determine if you like it or not. I don't know. I am happy with the trigger on this versus, you know, a, US, a plainly used one. The throw is perfectly good. It's the shoulders. What do you expect? Top cover fitment's fine. It's got a little play in the front. A little bit of gappage there. It doesn't have that real big hum. And the receiver, while it is a little shinier than the original parts, it's not such a dramatic difference in my opinion. It's fine. It's perfectly fine. Although I'd be lying if I didn't say I still think the Legion USA is ever so slightly little nicer feeling just a little tighter but I think part of their benefit was they were working from really really nice conditioned kits and they had kind of their pick of the litter but then again I've heard a lot of people complain about the color they used so you know when you get right down to it nothing's ever perfect is it the one reason I thought it'd be cool to have a 1960 AKM is because of course I have this of course, I'm talking about my Malat, at least what we know today is Malat 1961 RPK. Another Legion build. This is on a Nodak receiver. And it's one of the very few guns in my collection with a U.S. barrel. Only because finding original RPK spec barrels is very difficult. <laughs> And I wasn't going to pass this up. But I'm really glad I went ahead and got this from Legion USA back when they had them. It's got a wood pistol grip too. It's a little bit thicker. A little bit chunkier. Now this very well could be from an AK Type 3. Sure looks it. But I think it's neat. So I'm going to leave it on there. These certainly, def these certainly had wood grips. Pedal stock. And this has early features too for an RPK, like the ribbed top cover. And it too has a non-lightning cut carrier. Different pattern a little bit, but non-cut. And it has this style of selector for what it's worth. But this is an RPK from a different factory, so things are a little different. Yeah, I really like this gun. I had the paratrooper version they put together, but when push came to shove, I had to sell one. And as cool as the para was, I just early production RPK I could not say no to. And so that's what I thought this would make a nice companion for, in addition to the later AKM kind of completing the Russian set. So what do I think? Honestly, the safety doesn't bug me quite as much as it did at the beginning of the video. I do feel better after thinking about it and looking up a little bit on the lower handguard and the buttstock. Not saying they're exactly original to it. They could be, but they certainly seem original style. I think it's only the rear side that gives me pause, and even that I might be overthinking, so do let me know. Definitely the choice of Childers and FB Raid and Barrel is literally what I would have done because I did it. I can't say any better than that. I like that Atlantic did not force match anything like some people say that PSA did. It seems like they're using the original serials from the kit, so if there's an original serial like on the recoil guide, it's there in addition to the one that went with the kit. That makes it honest refurb rework gun. That's fine. 
I just don't like stuff that was faked in the USA. The gas tube fits tight, but also was easy to remove. One thing I noticed with the PSA, it fit tight, but it was really difficult to pull off. It was kind of crammed in up here, very tight. This comes apart as it should. The, sa the safety selector isn't overly loose or tight, unlike with the PSA. It works fine. The receiver, yeah, it should have three spot welds instead of two, but I, I, can't, I have to let stuff like that slide. By the way, on an RPK like this, early on, mag weld dimples are correct, but later on they would not be. And even though this is US barrel, at least it is chrome lined. I really do like this gun. I think it's because I like my two legions so much that I've been kind of wanting one more in that same vein and since they're longer no longer doing builds i've been trying to find someone else and luckily there have been quite a few russian parts kits and the psa was almost good enough for me that sounded really really something to, but you know what i mean though it was it was almost there it was it was really the u.s receiver and the u.s barrel the way they did it, not the fact that they were U.S., but the way they did them, marked them, that I just couldn't quite live with. Not for the same money as one of these. So now, I'm trying this out. As I said at the top of the hour, I paid for this with my own money. The only thing I did is in the notes for the order, I said an early gun would be nice say before you know 1965 or before when i was told you know when i was told it said 1960 i was uh, quite tickled i wasn't quite expecting that early <laughs> so that's cool kind of the same thing happened up here with the legion so is this one sling worthy well i guess not because i can't find the sling <laughs> i stuck it somewhere i'll find it later even then i'm not 100 percent there but I think I am closer than with the PSA. I need to investigate a few little things. I need to sleep on it. It's a big decision, and so, uh, yeah, I need to think. But it's hard to have any serious criticism. A lot of what I've said is a little tongue-in-cheek, intentionally nitpicky, but... That's what these are for. Like I said in the PSA video, these are for collectors. Yes, you can and should shoot them. But people are going to get these because they want a Russian AKM. Especially for the early or late ones. Those definitely fall into the collectible realm. Yeah, I need to sleep on it. Find my sling. But I, I, I think... It, uh, it's more, I think it's more up my alley. What do you think, though? My only things, I, I do wish it was a Tula, only so I could say I have a Tula and an Ishesk. Then again, I could just say my Mahdi is my Tula. I mean, it's pretty close. And it is kind of neat to have an early and a late from the same manufacturer. And, of course, Ishesk is the name in AK production. But I can't fault the quality of the build, the parts chosen, or really the quality of the original Soviet parts. They seem quite nice. Have any of you picked up any of these Atlantic builds, either past or present? Let me know. I think they really have upped their game the last few years when it comes to the replicas. Again, that quote-unquote Asian contract really impressed me last year. With that, I'll let you go, if you could. Share what you think, what you've seen here, pros and cons, what you think of this gun. If you could, do like, share, and subscribe. And like to help us out, get to the range, check out Patreon. This is Misha. Catch you very soon, next time.